So the first main skill that we learned in this chapter was thinking about equilibrium. Equilibrium constants is both Kc and Kp. Thinking about um, uh, interconverting Kp and Kc, and then also manipulating equilibrium constants. If we're summing up reactions, how do we manipulate um, reaction uh, um, coefficients or reaction um, equilibrium constants? So our next section here moves in, in our next couple of sample problems work on looking at comparing Q versus K to see which direction a reaction will shift. And remember, if you want to think about um, kind of a difference between Q and K, Q is kind of a snapshot of the concentrations where you are right now. K is a snapshot of the concentrations that you want to get to, your equilibrium values. And so what you have to really figure out is, am I reactant heavy? Or am I product heavy? If you're reactant heavy, that means you need to make more products and shift towards um, the right. Conversely, if um, Q is larger than K, that means you're product heavy and you need to actually have the reaction shift back the other way in order to make more reactant. So this first problem is a molecular scene problem that's going to allow us to think about um, comparing Q versus K. So for the reaction A being converted to B, and I'm going to define B as the blue spheres because that's just going to be easy to help remember, the equilibrium mixture at 175 degrees C is going to be a concentration of the red spheres as 2.8 times 10 to the minus fourth molar and a concentration of the blue spheres as 1.2 times 10 to the minus fourth molar. The molecular scenes that are shown below represent mixtures at various times during runs one through four of this reaction. Does the reaction progress to the right or the left or not at all for each mixture to reach equilibrium. So remember, anytime you see molecular scenes, so if we see molecular scenes, what that really means is we're going to need to count for concentration. So the first thing we want to do is each of these represents snapshots of where something's at. We can think about that as Q. We're given information here that can allow us to calculate K because they tell us equilibrium values. So we can define K here. Kc is going to be equal to the concentration of B at equilibrium over the concentration of A at equilibrium. And I get this because here's the chemical equation that's given. B is products, products over reactants. So we can get this value and they actually give us real chemistry concentrations. So we can put these in here. We can put the concentration of B in as 1.2 times 10 to the minus fourth. And we can put the concentration of A in as 2.8 times 10 to the minus fourth. And we can get Kc equal to 0 0.43. So what does this number really mean? When we're at where we want to be, we basically are going to have about twice as many red spheres as we have blue spheres. Because the concentration, the ratio of the amount of B over the amount of A is approximately a half. Okay, so keep that in mind. If we're going to see an equilibrium mixture, we're going to see about twice as many red as blue. Well, I can clearly look at this one and say, well, that's not going to be at equilibrium because there's a lot more blue than red. But what we're actually going to do for each of these problems is we're going to calculate where we're at. We're going to calculate the ratio of the concentration of blue to red and we're going to compare it to where we want to be and think about how that means we shift. So remembering for part A or for um, molecular scenes we're going to count. So for A here we're going to look at, um, I should write one, for molecular scene one right where we're at. So we're going to write Q where we're at is going to be the concentration that we have of blue over the concentration we have of red. And we're going to count spheres. So there's going to be eight blue spheres over two red spheres. And that's equal to four. Remember that Q represents the amount of product over the amount of reactant. If we wanted to have twice as many reactant as product here to give us our equilibrium value of about 0.5, this means that we are product heavy. So if you're product heavy, again, 4 being greater than 0 0.43, what you need to do is shift 
to the left in order to remedy that problem. And you might remember and go back to your lecture notes, we talked about kind of a number line method where if k represents a point on the number line where you want to be, if q is greater than k to the right of k, that means you're more on the product side than you're supposed to be. The way to fix that is to take some of those products and convert them back into reactants, which means your reaction has to shift back to the left. Let's go through these other molecular scenes. Again, QC for molecular scene two is going to be three blue spheres. We've got seven red spheres. That's 0 0.43. So in this case, Q equals K, which means we are at equilibrium. Where we are at represents where we want to be. Molecular scene three, QC equals four over six, four blue spheres over six red spheres, that's equal to 0 0.67. 0 0.67 being slightly greater than the 0 0.43 we have for KC tells us that we're slightly product heavy. But nonetheless, we will shift left. Keep in mind too, there's several ways I could ask you to answer this question. I might say, is the reaction going to shift to the left or to the right? I might ask, are you going to increase or decrease products, increase or decrease reactants? I might ask about a specific species and say, will its concentration increase or decrease as you approach equilibrium? So lots of different ways I can ask the question, but it's fundamentally comparing where you're at, Q, with where you want to be, K and thinking about how you need to change concentrations to get to where you want to be. Last part for this problem, QC for molecular scene four is two over eight. This is 0 0.25. At this point, we are reactant heavy. Reactant heavy because 0 0.25 is less than 0 0.43. In this case, our reaction will shift right. So again, asked another way, we would increase the concentration of B. We would decrease the concentration of A. We would increase the concentration of products. We would decrease the amount of reactants. So all different ways that we could answer the same question.